Hector Barajas now lives in a rundown apartment in Rosarito, Mexico. He grew up in Compton, California, and served for seven years in the Army. He thought that his military service would lead to full-fledged citizenship. I was a legal resident when I entered the military in 1995, uh, re-enlisted in 99, got out in 2001, I had two honorable discharges. I was under the impression that I was a U.S. citizen be automatically because of the recruiters, but that wasn't the case. Although military service can speed up the process of becoming a citizen, it's by no means automatic. Barajas got into trouble after leaving the military. He served a three-year sentence in prison for discharging a firearm into a vehicle. He faced mandatory deportation, just like any other non-citizen. Barajas was brought across the border and dropped off in Tijuana. The border tells him I'm an officer, man. His rough apartment now serves as a drop-in shelter for a rotating cast of deported vets, as well as the headquarters of their makeshift organization, Banished Veterans. What's up, it's Vic? a cramped space inside a tiny complex, tucked behind a chain-link fence. From floor to ceiling, the walls are covered with posters and notes, whiteboards with names and phone numbers. I, I'm doing what somebody did for me when I first got here. And, you know, we're supposed to take care of our, you know, you leave no man behind. So I'm a firm believer in taking care of these guys to the best of our abilities because this is a small apartment. Fabian Rebolledo is a recent arrival. He's a Kosovo combat vet and a former paratrooper. He arrived just four months ago after 24 years in Los Angeles. My deportation was uh, due to a uh, violation of probation due to a uh, insufficient funds check, $750. Like Barajas, Rebollero thought that military service would protect him. I was a little resident, and actually uh, I joined the military because I wanted to become a citizen. I was going to be the first uh, member of my family to become a citizen. But before the bad check, Rebollero had two DUI convictions. All of his crimes were nonviolent. They were still enough to ban him from the U.S. for the rest of his life. That's because of a 1996 immigration law that expanded the list of crimes considered to be aggravated felonies. The law even made some misdemeanor crimes result in permanent mandatory deportation for non-citizens. Barajas and advocates would like to see some judicial discretion come into play in these cases, taking military service into account. But right now, that's not happening. So, from the band vet headquarters in his Rosarito apartment, Barajas has been trying to keep track of the numbers. When I started doing this, uh, I started making just a, li a list, just, you know, just for the hell of it, and then uh, it started growing into something that people want to know because Homeland Security is not doing it. So um, I have 103 names already on my list to to different countries around the world. Um, also, right here in Tijuana, Rosarito, I'm looking at anywhere from 500 to 1,000 deported veterans. There's no way to confirm those numbers. Immigration and Customs Enforcement says they don't track deported veterans. Barajas is searching for other deported vets and trying to rally them and others. It's a lot like amateur detective work. He makes phone calls, uh, follows leads, sends Facebook requests, and tracks social media. What we basically do, we're doing what the Veterans Administration is not doing, what the gov U.S. government is not doing. Uh, so we're keeping tabs on these guys just for our purposes and for just, you know, just to make sure that we can somehow maybe facilitate them. Vets who commit crimes, do time, and are then deported can still be eligible for benefits, but it's impossible for them to collect most of them. But there is one benefit they can and do collect, burial. We're eligible to be buried as U.S. citizens when we die. We had a guy that died about four months ago. He was deported, was not let, he was not allowed to go back to the U.S. When he, went, when he died, then they let his body go. And then they give him a nice plaque saying, or certificate, thank you for serving our country. So when I die, I, I have a life deportation, then I can be burdened as, as an American. It's true. Unless they've been dishonorably discharged, the VA says all military veterans are entitled to burial in a national cemetery with a marker and a flag.